In this tutorial, we're going to take a close look at conditional formatting in Microsoft Excel. And for this video, we're going to use two different spreadsheets. This is the movie inventory spreadsheet that I used in some of my previous videos, including the beginner's guide to Microsoft Excel. If you haven't watched that, you definitely should. But this is just an inventory of movies that I own and some information about them. I will also be using this spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet of a lot of financial data, and it's a good example of the kinds of huge spreadsheets with lots and lots of data that a lot of times businesses have and use. So let's jump right in to conditional formatting, what it is and how to use it. So in my beginner's guide to Microsoft Excel, I gave a little bit of a sneak peek into conditional formatting. Let's talk about what it is. Conditional formatting is a tool that gives us the opportunity to change how data looks in the spreadsheet. It formats the data in the spreadsheet based upon certain conditions. That's why it's called conditional formatting. And you'll find conditional formatting on the Home tab, Home ribbon, in the Styles group. So let's look at some of the things it's capable of doing for us. Let's say I would like a visual representation of the DVDs that are worth the most right now. So I can look here at the value column, column D, and I can just eyeball this and see which ones are more valuable right now. Now, of course, I could also apply a filter that would filter out the cheaper, less valuable DVDs. But that would hide data. And let's say I'd like to be able to see all of the data, but be able to, at a glance, see which ones are more valuable. So the way to do that is to select column D in this case and go to the Home tab, Home ribbon, Styles group, and click Conditional Formatting. Now there are several different options that appear, and this is what we're gonna look at in this video. What do all of these options do for us? So let's start first with the top option, Highlight Cells Rules. So I would like to highlight cells that have numbers that are greater than a certain number. And I'm gonna put as the number 9.99, so greater than 9.99. And I just typed that right in this box here. Now next to that it says with light red fill with dark red text. So format cells that are greater than 999 with red, basically. Well, I would like to change that. In general, I think green represents money in a lot of cases. And so I would like to say green fill with dark green text. I click there and I get a sneak preview of what it will look like. And if I like it, I click OK. If I don't, I can click Cancel. But I'll click OK. So you can see what that did. It automatically changed the format of these particular cells. Because 14 is greater than 9.99, so is 15, so is 10. So those are all highlighted in green. Now notice what else is highlighted in green. The word value. Somehow the word value is greater than 9.99. And this is not really what I wanted. I don't want the word value in green. So how can I fix that? Well, what I would do is I would just click on the word value, go to conditional formatting, and clear rules from selected cells. I could clear them from the entire sheet, but then I would lose the formatting that I do want, this down here. So I'm just gonna clear rules from selected cells, and now that's exactly what I wanted to do. Now some of you might be wondering, why didn't I just click and drag and not include the word value in the spreadsheet range that I applied conditional formatting to? Well, the reason I didn't do that is because if I put in new data, notice that it's automatically formatted correctly. But that would not be the case if I had just clicked and dragged to select a range. That's why it's better in most cases to click an entire column, or if you want, even a row, and apply the conditional formatting to all of the information. And then just click and clear the rules from the selected cells. So hopefully that makes sense. Now in a spreadsheet this small, you can see that it is pretty useful. It does highlight those more valuable items for me, but imagine a spreadsheet that was much, much bigger. Conditional formatting can be even more useful in these cases, I think. Let's try a second example of how we can use conditional formatting. I'm gonna go here to Units Sold and click the entire column E, and I'll go to Conditional Formatting, and I just want to quickly show you that in addition to greater than, you can also do less than. So I could highlight cells that have data that's less than this number, and I can change that number. 
I can also highlight data that is between two numbers that's equal to a specific number. I can also highlight text that contains certain information. So for example, let's jump back to my movie inventory and I will select column A, choose conditional formatting, highlight sales rules, and I want to highlight text that contains the word star. And I want to highlight it in green. And you can see how that works. Now while I'm at it, I want to show you that you can also set up your own custom formats. So if you're not happy with the built-in options for formats, you can just create your own. So for example, I can go to fill and I can say I would like it to be filled in orange. The pattern color, I would like it to be a little bit lighter orange. What pattern style? Hmm, how about this? And I'll put in a border. What about the font? I would like it to be bold. And the color of the font, I would like it to not be automatic. Maybe I'd like it to be dark green. And then just click OK. So as you can see, you can design your own personal custom formats that change how the data looks on the screen. In most cases though, I typically just use yellow, green, and red, the defaults that are here. Okay, notice that you can also use highlight cells rules to find an occurring date and also to find duplicate values. So in this case, it's finding every number that is repeated somewhere else in this column. It is possible to also do a similar thing, but look not for duplicates, but for unique values. So as you can see here, I just went to highlight cells rules, more rules, and here it says format only unique or duplicate values. And then you change it from duplicate to unique. You can set up the format that you want it to do and then click OK. So this is showing cells that have unique information in this column. Okay, so this conditional formatting highlight cells rules category has lots of great options for us to help us format data the way we want it to look. Next, let's look at top bottom rules. And for this, I do want to switch to the other spreadsheet. And I do want to focus in here on column E in this spreadsheet. So I select column E, I'm going to go to conditional formatting, and this time, instead of looking for data that's higher or lower or between certain numbers, I just want Excel to show me the top and the bottom in this list. How about the top 10 items? So I click on that. The top 10 values in this range of cells will be formatted right now with light red. Let's change that to green, let's say. I click OK. And it's not obvious right off the bat what changed. But as I browse down the page, I do see some highlights. So those are top 10 values. Now, what if I want to change that up a little bit? Instead of top 10, maybe I want the top 20 or the top 50. So I can select column E again, go to conditional formatting, top bottom rules, and I could apply another top 10 rule. But if you remember, I already have a rule. So I'm gonna go down and choose Manage Rules. It pops up with the rule that I've selected and created already. I can click on it and click Edit Rule, and then I could change it from top 10 to maybe top 60. Or if you prefer, you could have it show the top percentage of the selected range. So maybe the top 10%. I'm just gonna leave it with the top 60 values. I click OK, click Apply, and OK, and now it should show even more cells highlighted in green, and it does. I'm gonna select column E again, go back to conditional formatting, and in this case, I'm gonna clear the rules from the entire sheet. Let's look at another option that we have. In addition to top 10 items, you could do top 10%, bottom 10 items, bottom 10%. You could have it show the values that are above average or the values that are below average. So those are great options. Let's look now at data bars. Data bars are an excellent visual way and kind of fun way to show data. So I'm going to jump to column H, gross sales. So I want to highlight here the products that have the highest gross sales. So I select column H and I go to the conditional formatting button and I'm gonna to go to data bars. And here you can just mouse over the top of these different options that you have but basically what we're doing is we're representing the numbers in the cells with a visual symbol, in this case, a data bar. So the bigger the number, 
the bigger the bar looks inside of the cell. And the choices that we have here are basically color and style options. So we have a gradient fill where it's solid green at the left and it starts to get lighter green on the right. We also have solid fill where it's just solidly green on the entire bar. So I like this option here and I'm gonna go with orange and yellow just to mix it up a little bit. So I click there and now just at a glance, I can see how much more this product is doing, especially in Germany. And I can know that just by glancing at this spreadsheet. As I browse down the page, again, I can see other standouts. So data bars really are a wonderful way to format your data so that it's easier to read and easier to understand. Before I leave data bars, I want to go down and click on more rules just to show you that there are some great options here. There's some advanced options that you can click through here and I would encourage you to explore those and see what you can do with them. But here, I want you to know that there's kind of a fun option here where you can show bar only. So let's say that the numbers themselves don't matter so much. Maybe you're showing this as a presentation and you don't necessarily want people to see the total amount of dollars in gross sales, but you just want them to be able to see how much better one product is selling over another. You could just go here and choose show bar only and then click OK. And I made a mistake there. I failed to select the entire column. So I'm gonna click on column H and I'm going to try that again. So conditional formatting, data bars, more rules, and this time show bar only. I click OK, and at the same time, you probably noticed I changed the bar color to blue. So I have to watch out for that. If that's not what I wanted to do, I need to go in and change it. But you can see the results now. The numbers are hidden, and all we have is a bar that indicates how these numbers compare to each other. Now, if you do click on a cell, the number that still is in the cell shows up here in the formula bar. So the number's still there, it's just hidden temporarily from us. We can bring that back by selecting column H in this case, going to conditional formatting, data bars, more rules, and I can just make sure show bar only is unchecked. If I want to, this is my chance to change the color back to orange, and then I can click OK. You can see that now the numbers and the data bars appear. All right, let's jump over here, not to gross sales, but to sales. I will select column J, and this time let's go to conditional formatting and color scales. Now color scales are in some ways similar to data bars. You can see that there's a scale here from dark red on the bottom to dark green on the top. This color scale is different. This is dark green at the bottom, dark red at the top. This one goes from dark red at the bottom to white at the top, and then this one is all green. This one's all green also, with the dark green on the bottom this time. This one, dark green's on the top. So this is an opportunity for me to pick the right color scheme based on how I want my data to look. And I guess what I would like is the lower numbers in red and the higher numbers in dark green. So I can just glance at this now, and the most profitable items are in dark, dark green, and then they go lighter green as they get lower and lower, then they turn to yellow, and then the lowest numbers are in dark red. What a wonderful visual way to format your data and to help people to be able to read that data and understand it better. Next, I'm gonna jump over to Profit, and I will select column L. Let's look at conditional formatting icon sets this time. And icon sets are similar to color scales and data bars. Basically, I'm saying I want an icon to appear in each cell, depending on the value of the data in the cell. And what I'm choosing here is the symbol type. So I have directional symbols, shapes, indicators, ratings, and you can go into more to explore other options too. And then I also have to choose the number of icons to deal with. So this one has three, this one has four, this one has five, this one has four, this one has three, the number of icons that you select is important because the data that you have in a particular column or row is going to be divided up, in this case, into thirds, in this case, into fourths, in this case, into fifths. And so you need to decide how many ways you want to divide up your data. I'm going to pick these three arrows. So I click on it, and you can see what it did 
First of all, in order to fit that icon in the column, Excel had to turn some of the numbers into pound signs. So I can fix that just by double clicking on the line between column L and column M. So I'll just double click. That provides just the right amount of width so that the icon and the data can both fit. And you can see the result. I can just glance at this and see that these are in the bottom third of numbers. This one here is in the middle third, and then the top third is here. Okay, so this icon set I think is wonderful. I think it works great, but you can also try other icon sets. You can try traffic lights. You can also do flags. You can do indicators like a check mark, stars, data bars, and even more. If you do go into more rules, you can customize this even more if you would like to. For example, notice that you can change the cutoff here. So the way it is set up automatically, this green stoplight will appear if the value is at 67% or higher of the total amounts that are shown. Yellow if it's less than 67 and more or equal to 33. So if I want to, I can adjust this and say 85% here and maybe 20% here and then click OK. If you don't want it to be percent, you can change it to the specific value, the number, or to a formula. There's just all of these different options that you have. I'm gonna change it to, like I said, 85 and 20. I'll click OK. And you probably noticed some of these colors changed based on the decisions that I made there in the advanced options. So this has been a pretty in-depth look at conditional formatting in Excel. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and that it's been helpful to you. If it has, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribed button. If you do that, you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. Coming soon, I'll show an advanced video on how to highlight an entire row based on your conditional formatting that you choose so that it doesn't just highlight in green, yellow, and red just in this column, but it would highlight the entire row based on the conditional formatting in each cell in this column. So watch for that advanced conditional formatting video in the near future. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below.